is far greater, far bigger than anything that we could imagine. He loves us. This is the God we surrender to tonight. So as we continue to sing this, I pray that we sing this with surrendered hearts. Not just with our hands up high, but with our hearts open to God. And we sing my song. And I surrender. Thank you. 
I start, I have to tell you that my life has been blessed beyond measure. And God's mercy and grace for me have been immeasurable. But it hasn't always been that way. I grew up in a place called Auckland, New Zealand. It's just below Australia. And I grew up in a pretty rough neighborhood in Auckland. I remember the first time I had a cigarette, I was seven years old. I remember the first time I broke into a house, I was about 11 or 12. And we went in to steal my neighbor's beers, so I guess that's when I had my first drink. And I guess my life spiraled out of control mostly because over half of my childhood, I was physically and sexually abused multiple times. And I guess that set off something within me that I just kept making bad choices, one after the other. Till one day I was 17 years old and I'd moved to Sydney by then. And I just remember saying to God, I grew up in a Christian family. I said, God, if I'm continuing to hurt the people that I'm meant to love, and if the people who are meant to love me continue to hurt me, then I actually don't want to do this life anymore. I don't want to live. I want to give this away. I don't want it. And I actually remember holding the knife against my chest. I'd been crying the whole day. The 17-year-old boy lost and broken. And I remember praying that to God. And somehow, out of His goodness, out of His grace and love for me, He intervened that day. And I didn't end up taking my life. Amen. You see, you see my workaholic sister... For some reason that day decided that she wanted to take, um, take time off work and come home early. And I felt the knife piercing my chest as I was praying that prayer. And just before I was about to take my life, I heard a knock at the door. And I took that as a sign from God. And from that moment I decided to chase God with everything that I had. Here's the most amazing thing is I'm 27 now. And 10 years later on, not only have I given my life to Christ, but I got to marry the girl of my dreams. Woo! A beautiful baby boy. Woo! And I can say that I am fulfilling the calling of God on my life. I am fulfilling the call of God upon my life. And that is the greatest miracle. Yeah, if you're going to praise Him... God every day that that lost 17 year old broken and hurt boy decided to follow Jesus but you see the turning point wasn't my messed up past the turning point wasn't my wife and my kid and the fact that I get to do what I love the turning point was that I was once disconnected from a God who loved me and I was doing this life alone without him and I believe with every fiber in my being that no person is meant to be disconnected from a God who loves him. And is meant to be doing this life alone. And when I mean alone, I mean spiritually. You're doing this life alone. You have a dead spiritual life. And so I actually want to pray for people tonight. I want to give people an opportunity to respond to this gracious and loving God, the same one that I encountered 10 years ago. Now you may not have heard of Jesus tonight. This may be the first experience you've had of this type of worship setting. Or maybe you grew up in church like I did. But for some reason you've fallen away from God. I want to pray for you tonight. And I want to give you a chance to reconnect with a God who loves you. And to no more do this life alone and apart from Him. So with every head bowed and every eyes closed. All eyes closed. Whether you share a story similar to mine or whether your story is the complete opposite. You were never meant to do life alone without God and you were never meant to be disconnected from a God who loves you. And the way we reconnect with Him is to invite Jesus, our Savior, into our heart who died for our sin. Who bled to set us free. And so I'm going to count to three and whether you've made the decision before and you know that you're not spiritually right or maybe you've never made this decision, I encourage you 
to make that decision today because God loves you, my friend. And he wants to connect with you. And He wants to make sure you never do this life alone. So by the count of three, I want you just to pop your hand up quickly, high enough, long enough for me to see it. And then we're going to pray together. One, God loves you. He loved me. And if He loves me, I know that He loves you. Two, the Bible says that today, today is the day of salvation, which means you don't have to wait anymore. You don't have to wait to connect with this God who loves you, who sent His Son to be a sacrifice for you. Three, why don't you raise your hand right now. All across this place, hands are going up. People are making decisions to reconnect with a God who loves them. I'm going to wait a while longer for you, friend, because I know you're in here. And I know you want to make this decision. And we want to pray with you. We want to say the prayer that invites Jesus into your heart. So if that's you, one last time, why don't you quickly raise your hand. Awesome. More and more hands are being raised. This is great. This is awesome. Well, can we give those people a hand? Can we, as, as a family, just repeat this prayer after me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I invite you into my heart. I accept your forgiveness for my sins. I accept your forgiveness for my sins. I will now follow you. I will now follow you. For the rest of my life. For the rest of my life. I receive your love. I receive your love. I receive your goodness and your mercy. Your goodness and mercy. In Jesus' name. We said. Amen. Amen. Come on.
Bible tells us that at his name every knee will bow and every tongue will confess of his glory and of his majesty. And you know, I don't know what you've come in here with tonight, but you know, names get attached to our lives. It could be sickness, it could be a label that's been attached to you. And the good news is tonight that, that whatever that name is, it comes under the name of Jesus. Amen. And we, we worship a higher name tonight. Yeah. You know, the Bible says that when God made His promise to us, He sealed it with His name, with an oath. And He swore by His name because there was no higher name. And Hebrews 6 goes on to say that we have this hope in His name as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. And it enters in behind the veil where Jesus has entered on our behalf. And he has become our high priest forever. Amen? Amen.